If you use Premiere Pro, then you know how frustrating it can be to actually create effects. You have to create adjustment layers, you have to keyframe those effects, and you have to nest them, and so on and so on. And all that processing is very taxing on your computer and on your time. Luckily, I've been given the opportunity to try out this new Premiere Pro plugin called Premiere Pro FX. This plugin comes with over 10,000 different effects, including transitions, color grades, animations, etc. So let me show you how you can level up your editing game with just one plugin, Premiere Pro FX. Let's hop in. So when you first open up Premiere Pro, you're gonna actually have to show the window for Premiere Pro FX. You're gonna do that by going up to Window, clicking on Extensions, and it will be called Premiere FX Extension. Select that. And depending on your workspace, it can pop up on the right-hand side or on the left-hand side where the effects panel usually is. So now you'll see Premiere Pro Effects here and you're just gonna simply select launch the app. And now when you first open up, you'll see you have a ton of different effects and tools available to you. Feel free to actually go through this because once again, there is over 10,000 different effects. So find the ones that will work with you and that you actually enjoy using. It's gonna take some time, but let me show you what I would do. So let's start off by showing you how I can create a handheld motion effect on a static tripod shot. First, you're gonna to have to go down to Camera Motion Effects Studio. And under Handheld Camera, we have a ton of different handheld options. I wanna go for a very subtle effect here, so I'm gonna actually use this one, which is the 24 millimeter handheld light. And before you apply any of these effects, you actually wanna make sure that your playhead is at the start of the clip. So for example, if my playhead was at the middle of the clip, like here, I would actually use one of my arrow keys to go to the bottom or the start of the clip. In this case, I want at the start, make sure it's there. And now all we have to do is double click the effect we want to apply. And you'll see that Premiere Effects does its magic. You'll notice that it doesn't cover the whole clip, so it actually kind of jumps for a moment here. What you want to do to fix that is actually just simply drag this out to cover the duration of your whole clip. And now you'll see if I press play, the whole clip has this very subtle handheld motion to something that used to be a tripod shot. Here's the comparison side by side so you can see the difference. And the cool thing with Premiere Pro effects is that you can actually stack these effects with one another. So for example, I like this handheld shot. What if I want to create a film overlay to give it that anamorphic look? Well, I can do that. So to get the anamorphic look, you actually have to open up Looks and Effects Studio, which we scroll down here. And then Looks and Effects, you're actually gonna open up Framing and Letterbox. And you, once again, you have a bunch of different options. I found the anamorphic one I like is Anamorphic Stretch version two. So we're gonna select that. But first, make sure our play hits at the beginning. Now simply double click and apply. And you'll see that we have this anamorphic look. And all we have to do is make sure it lasts the duration of the clip. It looks really cool, but it's not framed accurately. So all you have to do to fix that is actually select your clip on the bottom layer and go to the effects control panel and adjust the frame by moving the parameters here. So I'll adjust it to get their faces and add just a hair of headroom. And now if we actually start from the beginning, you'll see we have this slight handheld motion to our tripod shot while also creating an anamorphic look with the overlay effect. Another great thing I like about these effects is that they are technically customizable. So if this anamorphic look, I think the Gaussian blur is a little too intense towards the edges. That's a pretty natural roll off or actually fall off for anamorphic lenses and cameras, but I want to reduce the intensity. So how would I do that? Simply select the layer you want to adjust. And once you open it in the effect controls panel, you'll see you have a bunch of different parameters, transform, crop, which is doing the crop, and then Gaussian blur. This is what I want to change. So I open up Gaussian blur and we see the mask here and we see it's very centered. So what I would like to do is actually feather it further out towards the edges of the frame so that it's not so sudden the blurriness, but then I would bring up the top and bottoms because I do like when that happens in my frames as well. And now you can see I've actually customized the effect to my liking. And that's another great thing that I really love about Premiere Pro FX. Another cool effect I like is trying to make a dreamy look either by softening the image or adding glitch. Let me show you exactly. So let's open up Premiere Pro FX and under FX Master Studio, we actually have dreamy effects. And the one that I thought was the coolest, especially because of how it distorts motion, is this bottom one called Dreamy Hyper Trip. Once again, make sure your playhead's at the beginning and then just double click. And now I'm gonna extend this to the duration of the whole clip. 
and simply hit play so you can see the effect that we've added. So as you can see in full resolution at 4K, this effect is very taxing. So what I can do is actually render this out or play back at a lower resolution. For you guys, I'm gonna render out in full res so you can see on your screens right now. And as you can see, the movement of the ballerina during her motion really adds a weird trippy glitch-like effect with this effect. Now let's say we wanna create a more dreamy soft look by adding a sort of blooming to our image. I will simply remove these off right now. And if we go into looks and effects studio and under, I believe it is glow, I have one that I favorited because of how light it was. And it was color light here. Let's double click, extend it for the duration of my clip. And then we can hit playback so you guys can see the full effect. And you can see there's such a haze and bloom around all the highlights and bright parts of the image that make it seem like we shot on some sort of either vintage lens or a blooming lens. I think this is a little too intense. So I'm gonna go to effects panels, select the effect, and we'll see that we have the opacity here. And if I wanted to reduce the intensity of this bloom, I would drop the opacity to something like 50. And then if we look through again, you'll see there's still a blooming effect, but it's much more subtle and something that I would actually prefer using over 100%. All right, now let's try some text animations. So let's say I want to do a text animation here. I would actually actually start by typing my text. And now if we open up Premiere Pro Effects and go to the text animation panel, and from here I actually like animation shift. So if we select the in animation, you'll see that it applies, but there will be a weird bug that will happen. So when we hit play, you'll see that the whole effect applies to not just the text, but to the video layer underneath. So how do you go around this? What you really need to do here is actually apply a nest to the text and the animation so that they only work with one another. So you're gonna have to right click here and go down and click nest. And you can call this whatever, I'll call it text graphics. And now when we bring the playhead to the start, you'll see the video is still in full frame but then the text will slide in and up into frame. And that's what you would have to do when you're layering these effects so that they apply to only the specific elements of the scene that you want them to apply to. And that's animating text. All right, and last thing I'll show you here as I'm losing light from the sun is transitions and color grade. So transitions, there's so many. The one I really liked is this glitch transition, which I'll show you. If we go onto Transition Master Studio and we go down to glitch you'll see i already favorited one that i thought was a little more subtle and what i was looking for for this video clip now in this case you want to make sure that the playhead is between the two clips you want the transition to apply to so in my case it is between this handheld shot versus this drone shot and now i'm ready to just simply double click and now when we look at our scene you'll see we have this handheld shot into a glitch to the drone shot which i think looks really dope now let's apply a color grade to both clips to help them match a little bit better and add a little feel to this sequence. So we're gonna make sure our playhead's at the beginning of the clip. Now we're gonna go down to Color Master Studio and I'm gonna go to Color Pop. And I favorited this one that I thought was really nice and quite subtle. And that is the Color Pop grade at the bottom. Now, when we apply this effect to our clip, you'll see that it overrode the transition just a little bit. So what you wanna do is undo that with Command Z and make sure your playhead is actually somewhere else and then apply this color grid. And then what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you extend it over the entire clip. Now you'll see that our footage has this nice little red color poppy effect. And gives us a nice little warm cinematic look to our footage. So if you want to level up your editing game, you're gonna to wanna to check out Premiere Pro Effects plugin, link in the description and in the comments. It is a one-time payment of $59, but it allows you to use it for all your own personal work and even some client work. However, most people are wondering why there's an extended license if everything's the same between them. Well, the only difference that the extended license gives you is to actually use these effects on projects such as TV shows or movies, something that's gonna be sold to the public. Otherwise, if you're doing this as a freelancer, like I am, you actually just need the first license, the standard license, and you'll actually gain access to not only updates to the um, plugin, and you also get access to all 10,000 plus effects 
you're not missing out on anything by not going with the extended license. So if you are interested in getting this pack for yourself, I highly recommend you check out the links I left below because I do receive a small commission for using those. I'll also include a link to Envato Elements if you want to check them out because that's where I got all this B-roll that you're seeing and using for these test clips. Envato Elements has a ton of different assets, whether it be graphics, B-roll, stock music, uh, title cards, etc. If you really enjoyed this video, YouTube thinks you'll like this video a lot. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end and I'll see you in the next one. Later.